there are mainly two ways to interact with and evolve in the crypto universe. Traditional finance with centralized exchange, for example Binance, Bybit or Qcoin, on which you'll be able to buy, sell your crypto, do leverage trading, make participatory loan imprints and, I don't know, range pools? Anyway, everything you've already seen previously in my playlist from Zero to Crypto Hero, but also there is the possibility of doing that in a decentralized way, using decentralized exchanges or DEX. In this video, we will talk about DeFi and it is super important to know how to use it when you want to succeed in the crypto world. We will see the pros and cons associated since there are big disadvantages to the DeFi. If you want to know more about DeFi, then let's check it out right now. Hello everyone and welcome to Road to Millions in English. Today we're meeting for a new video in the playlist from Zero to Crypto Hero and this time we are going to talk about DeFi. By now you've seen a long series of videos on how to buy, sell, profit from crypto and much more. We've seen a lot of things but all of this was in a centralized way. So we have to go through platforms that will generally ask us to show our identity through QIC. We have seen a lot of things by now but all of that was in a centralized way, so we have to go through platforms that will generally ask us to show our identity through QIC, know your customers. Basically, it's proving to the platform who you are, with your identity card, with your proof of address, those types of things. In short, really, you prove that it's you, and it has big advantages. The simplicity, for example, it is very user-friendly and easy to access. Everyone can now successfully buy and sell cryptos on centralized exchanges. But there is also another way, which is decentralized exchangers, or DEX. And there you can roughly do exactly the same thing as on centralized finance platforms, but in a decentralized way, where you wouldn't need to show your ID, because since it's decentralized, there is no one who regulates it, so you'll be able to do all of that without QIC. You can do the same things as on centralized platforms, but generally with a little timing advance, because when a crypto comes out, for example, it is first listed on a decentralized exchange before being listed on a centralized exchange. So in most cases, sometimes if we want to be early in the crypto party, it can be really helpful to take an interest in what is happening in the world of decentralized finance. In DeFi, you can find platforms called DEX that allow you to buy, sell and exchange your crypto. We call it making swaps. The two best known DEXs are Uniswap, which was originally created for the Ethereum blockchain, and we will see that everything that is on the DeFi is linked to the Ethereum ecosystem, since these are the blockchains which are EVM, since these are blockchains that are EVM compatible, which means that it is compatible with the Ethereum virtual machine, and everything is on the ERC20 format. So you have a whole bunch of blockchains now that are compatible with the ERC20 format and you use either their own token to operate or the Ethereum tokens. For example, in the Ethereum blockchain, you have Mental, Base, Optimism, the Qcoin community chain, the Binance Smart Chain, you have a whole bunch of them. There are dozens, if not hundreds, of different blockchains on which we can interact in DeFi. To summarize, we have our decentralized exchanges allow us to exchange one crypto for another and do swaps. Now, mainly, we have Uniswap. We also have PancakeSwap, which was also one of the first DEX to be released. And this one is focused on the Binance Smart Chain. Then of course, on decentralized exchanges, you can find a lot of different blockchains, which was not the case at first. Since it is evolving and each time you have a new blockchain that comes out, you have a new decentralized exchange that come out to be the first one to operate on that blockchain. Then you can actually do trading and even leverage trading for that matter. Well, the main ones that I use are DYDX Exchange and Apex Exchange. The latter being the decentralized version of Bybit and there you can do exactly the same thing as on the centralized platforms. That is to say, leverage trading if you wish of course with all the risks that it involves. And so, because it's easier for you, I will put the links directly in the description and pinned comment. And I should also point out that on DYDX and on Apex Exchange you will benefit from some reductions on your trading fees if you use these links. Finally, on the DeFi, you will also be able to use bridges. But what is that? Well, quite simply, it's a bridge that will allow you to move from one blockchain to another, that is to say, to send tokens from one blockchain to use them on another blockchain. 
blockchains do not all work in the exact same way, but there is a certain interoperability between them. That is to say that there are certain blockchains that will use Ether to operate, like I told you earlier, to validate your transactions, to pay those who secured the network for example, and the Ether you will be able to use on Ethereum for example, but also on the Optimism blockchain, on the Arbitrium blockchain for example. Each time it is Ether, Ethereum, which will allow you to make all of this work. On the Binance Smart Chain, it will be the BNB of Binance. On the Mental Blockchain, it will be the Mental Token from Bybit. And therefore, generally, you don't necessarily have all the cryptos you want to use from a blockchain. So you'll need bridges, so that you can send crypto from blockchain A to blockchain B in a simpler way. It can be in a native or synthetic way, because, for example, Bitcoin runs on the Bitcoin blockchain and we can very well somehow, in big quotes, encapsulate Bitcoins to use synthetic Bitcoins on the Ethereum blockchain for example. These are called synthetic Bitcoins. You pretty much have it for all the blockchains and all the cryptos you want, so bridges, which we will see later on other videos in detail, are an essential element for using in DeFi. Then you have lending borrowing platforms such as Avi or Synthesize, to name only a few. And there you'll be able to earn money by depositing your cryptos in pools on these platforms. When you are going to deposit, let's say, Ether and USDT on these platforms, it will create pools, and then these platforms will use it to make prices, to loan to other people who want to take out loans. When these people take out these loans, they will have to pay interest. So the interest will come to pay to these platforms and to you who participated in providing the liquidity that will allow these people to take their loans. In this way, you can generate quite attractive returns between 5 and 10%. In general, sometimes a little bit less, hardly more anyway. But you will be able to make your cryptos work this way with this type of platform and on other platforms as well, such as PancakeSwap. Well, you will be able to stack certain cryptos to earn money or on Uniswap or QuickSwap, all the DEXs really. You'll be able to provide liquidity because on centralized platforms there is a centralized entity that allows exchanges to be made. But here, because there's none and liquidity is needed, it's up to the users who will put their liquidity in a liquidity pool. And that's what it's called. And it will allow exchanges. For example, we have big bags full of Ethereum, big bags full of USDT, and every time a user wants to swap Ether for USDT, we're going to take Ether to give it to the user, and we're going to fill the USDT pool because he took one USDT and vice versa. And each time we'll charge fees. Those fees will pay for the platform which provides its services and of course the user who provides the liquidity to enable these exchanges. This is also another way to make money in crypto. Everything is beautiful and very interesting but know that to interact with all this you need an e-wallet, an electronic portfolio. There are several available, the most well known and widespread it's called Metamask and it will be the subject of the next video, so stay tuned. It is a wallet compatible with Ethereum virtual machine and therefore all blockchains ERC20 and it will allow you to interact with all the protocols, all the decentralized applications that exist and will be able to make your exchanges thanks to this portfolio. There are others among my favorites, for example the Trust Wallet and the Rabbi Wallet and I will also make videos on those. So if you're really a beginner and you have no idea how to get started, well, stay tuned. I'm going to make videos to understand this and set this up properly, super quickly and super easily. And now I have to talk to you about the stains on decentralized finance, because there are not just stains in decentralized finance, but also on DeFi. Well, on DeFi, because of how decentralized it is, it all depends on you. It depends on the platforms that you use. And if you make a mistake, for example, if you send money to the wrong address, if you accidentally make a mistake with your funds and lose them, well, too bad. There is no higher entity that will come and reimburse you, bail you out if you made a mistake. No, you are the master of your crypto, owner of your destiny. And if you get fooled by a hack, by, I don't know, a scammer, if you make a handling mistake, there is no going back, you have to be hyper vigilant when you use decentralized finance. It is super interesting, but you have to be super responsible and diligent and know what you're doing. 
Therefore, follow this channel because I'm going to explain in depth how to do everything in the best way possible. You will see at first it seems complicated, but in fact it is not at all. So this is the first downside. The second downside is that decentralized exchange platforms like wallets can be susceptible to hacking, and that's the big downside. Every day we see decentralized exchange protocols for lending, borrowing or whatever, bridges being hacked and we see every day that users money from time to time can be siphoned off or lost. It happens very regularly and that's why you have to be very very careful with DeFi as usual but even more than usual remember not your keys not your crypto. Always be aware that what you do on centralized exchanges or decentralized you have to do it by managing your risks. That is to say by keeping the minimum of cryptos necessary to carry out your actions and the rest of your cryptos that you want to keep for example in the medium over the long term you must store them securely if possible on hardware wallets such as SafePal or even Ledger Keys. There are plenty of options there that you can find on my YouTube channel. Everything you need to know about how these tools work and how to secure your crypto. And so guys, that's all for this video. I invite you to the following video to see how MetaMask Wallet works and how to set it up correctly, easily, super quickly and really up to date on the day we're going to watch this video. If you want to support my channel, well, don't hesitate to check out the links in the description or pinned comment because every time you use those links, you directly support my channel and if you do so thank you i'll see you soon for the next video ciao